In this week's episode, we are going to be exploring the fabled myth of dark matter and how its elusive search for this mysterious particle have actually led us closer to finding evidence of the existence of the electric universe than finding anything to do with dark matter. Now the term dark matter was first coined back in 1884 when Lord Kelvin estimated the number of dark bodies in the Milky Way from observed velocities of stars orbiting the centre of the galaxy. From this he estimated that the mass of the galaxy which he determined was different from the mass of visible stars and he concluded many of our stars, perhaps a great majority of them, may be dark bodies. In 1906, Henry Poincare, when referring to Lord Kelvin's work, first used the term dark matter. When we observe the effects of gravity on large objects which rotate around a central axis, there is a ratio that holds true no matter what the size of the body. Now, This amazing ratio was first discovered by Johannes Kepler in the 17th century. He was a German astronomer, a mathematician and an astrologer. He was an assistant to Tycho Brahe, who meticulously catalogued the position of stars and planets over many, many years. Tycho was a firm believer in the notion that the Earth was at the centre of the universe, and was busy trying to update Ptolemy's model of the solar system. Kepler had very different ideas about the structure of the universe, and saw something in the data that Tycho had collected over many, many years. He was, over a period of many years, without the aid of calculators or log tables, able to construct the Kepler laws of planetary motion. All the more remarkable is that his third law is basically Newton's law of gravitation, which would not be penned for at least another hundred years. And in this law it states that the square of the time period of rotation of a planetary body is related directly to the cube of the radius. In other words, it has nothing to do with its mass. The further out a body is, the longer it takes to orbit around the centre. And this simple statement holds exactly for our solar system. If the mass of the central object is increased, more gravity would be generated and the objects would rotate faster. If an object rotated faster than its orbit would allow, it would move further out either reaching an orbit further out or leaving the system altogether. Also, if the object was slowed down, it would spiral inwards, increasing its speed until it reached another more stable orbit or collided with the Sun. As our telescopes improved and we were able to observe the rotation rates of galaxies, something curious started to be observed. The galaxies were rotating with such speed that the gravity generated by the observable matter could not possibly hold them together. It should have flown apart eons ago, and when they observed spiral galaxies they realised that the arms of the spirals should have long disappeared as the rotation rate on the outside should have been much slower. In fact, what they saw was the whole galaxy was rotating at a similar speed, much more like a record or a merry-go-round. In order to solve this problem, they determined that there must be hidden dark matter spread throughout the galaxy, causing the extra mass and hence gravitational effects to account for this increased rotation on the outer edge. The problem was that this matter could not interact with normal matter in any other way than gravity, otherwise we would have detected it. And this makes detecting it all the more impossible. We are talking about a substance that allows light and normal matter to pass right through it and the only effect you would see are the perturbations caused by gravity. So why are we looking for it in the first place? The evidence has been mounting for some time that something is going on that we simply do not understand and the evidence comes from a number of different sources. So the first is the galaxy rotation problem which we've already discussed. The second is the velocity dispersion of stars within elliptical galaxies. The third is galaxy cluster mass implies that they should have more mass than they actually do. Gravitational lensing of objects implies something is bending light that cannot be seen. 
Now I haven't done enough research on this yet, but there is a counter argument that light can be refracted through plasma, possibly causing a similar effect. Cosmic background radiation should have developed into a very uniform pattern. And it hasn't, and this implies that something must have caused the matter to clump together in these strange patterns. And when we're talking about strange patterns, we are talking here about the filamentary structure that we've discussed in a number of the videos in the past. So they invoke dark matter, but they don't explain how the dark matter clumped there in the first place. So in effect, there are good reasons for us to be looking for an answer. Now the hunt for dark matter has gone on for over 25 years and in this time at least 35 experiments have attempted to detect these particles directly. All have failed to detect anything. The three major particle colliders have been used to try and create and detect dark matter during a collision. All have failed. Satellites have been launched to try and detect this dark matter out in space. All have failed. We have spent billions of dollars on this research and the money keeps being poured into it. Now some major breakthroughs have largely gone unreported, which really should have put an end to the search. Now in the Lambda Coal Dark model, galaxies would have very few dwarf galaxies and they should be distributed in a very random fashion all the way around the galaxy. Now we've already discussed in the video looking at quasars and uh, an alternative to the Big Bang that actually the way that these dwarf galaxies are distributed is far from random and it tends to favour the axis of rotation. Now recently they have confirmed that that is not only true for our own galaxy, it is true for Andromeda and also Centaurus A. And this is a big problem for the Lambda Cold Dark model because it not only predicts that there should be few of them, but also it predicts that they should be distributed randomly. And we're clearly seeing with three galaxies that that is not the case. Now in their attempt to find dark matter, scattered along these long filament structures in the universe, what they have instead uncovered is this vast network of plasma connecting and flowing along these filaments. So every time they searched for dark matter, what they actually discovered and detected was plasma. No dark matter to be seen at all. Now what's interesting is that there are um, galaxies which are forming along these plasma tunnels like pearls on a necklace and these galaxies are aligning themselves with a filament connection and again we have discussed already in the video where we looked at Birkeland currents and where we looked at Markland convection this is what we would expect to see if this is a Birkeland current and there is a Z pinch occurring we would expect these galaxies to start forming at these certain points and what's interesting is it is points which are equidistant or there is a ratio between them suggesting some sort of potentially standing wave within the Birkeland current and bear in mind from what they've measured is is they're measuring the fact that this plasma is moving and if the plasma is moving that is what we call a current it is a Birkeland current tracing across millions and millions of light years, connecting together the fabric of our entire universe. They have detected hot plasma being ejected along the axis of rotation of galaxies, far more than they had originally thought, and very similar to the solar wind, but on a much, much larger scale. Now this matter does not simply disappear, the matter would end up being pushed outwards towards the edges of the galaxy, and all this matter has mass, and this sort of mass is very hard to detect, as we've seen as well recently where we looked at is the cosmos alive, we talked about the fact that there was dust around Enclades and the most well studied dust ring recently discovered the fact that there was a much bigger dust ring around it which was hidden for many many years until our equipment was able to detect it. So plasma 
is hiding in plain sight. Now, could this extra matter, this real matter, not pretend dark matter that doesn't exist, but could this extra matter account for the rotation problem of galaxies and the missing mass? The more that they search for the dark matter, the more that we actually uncover about our electric universe. So in some senses, it's not a bad thing that the search continues because the more that they look, the more that they find plasma and dust in areas that they thought it never should have been or it never would have been. We know now that the universe is not cold and empty. It is filled with plasma. It is filled with electric currents that flow and connect everything together. I hope you found this an interesting insight into the history behind dark matter and where we are today in our study and the fact that actually it is helping us discover the electric universe. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.